All right, guys, I had a quick question. Uh, the question was about finding the derivative of f of x equals sine x over x, and then evaluating that at the value c equals pi over 4. Okay? So essentially what, what that is is we want to find f of x. So find f of x, excuse me, find f prime of x, and then find f prime of c when c equals pi over 4. So we want to find this thing right there and this thing right there. Okay? So this is a quotient of two functions, so we're going to need to use the quotient rule. So we could say that f prime of x is equal to, okay, quotient rule, you're going to have a big fraction. It's called an obelisk, a big fraction bar. So it's the derivative of the first. So the derivative, oh, I said first. Derivative of the top function, so that's sine x, times the bottom function, which is just x, minus the derivative of the bottom function, which is just x, times the top function, which is sine x, over the bottom function squared. <clears throat> so let's see here. The derivative, if we go ahead and take those smaller der derivatives now, the derivative of sine is cosine. So we have cosine x times x. I'll write the x out in front, like so. Because uh, I, I don't want to accidentally think that there's a cosine of x squared. So I write the x out in front. Minus, what's the derivative of x? Well, that's just 1. So minus sine x. Okay? Uh, over x squared. So let's double check. Derivative of sine is cosine times x. So x cosine x. The derivative of x is 1, so 1 times sine x is sine x. So that is f prime of x. Now, the second part of the question was to find the uh, derivative evaluated at c, where c is pi over 4. So, what we want to do is evaluate f prime at pi over 4. So let's see. Essentially what, that, what that's doing is that is finding the slope of the tangent line when x equals pi over 4. Recall that c is just a particular x value. We used oftentimes in chapter 2 and in chapter 3 have used c to represent a specific x value. So all we need to do here is um, essentially substitute in pi over 4 for everywhere there is an x in this derivative function. Again, we're just finding, essentially, or we are finding the slope of the tangent line of f at pi over 4. <coughs> Excuse me. So, everywhere there's an x, turn it into a pi over 4. So, pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 4. minus sine of pi over 4 divided by pi over 4 squared. Okay, now let's think about uh, a unit circle here. So we have pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 4. Now think about uh, your unit circle. Remember that you have a unit circle now, I'm going to draw a really terrible you know, unit circle, if I could even draw some straight <laughs> straight lines. <laughs> we'll, we'll just go with that. Okay, so if we have a, you know, there's the first quadrant of the unit circle, and then pi over 4 is this angle right here, like at 45 degrees, if I could draw it nicely. I will just call it there. Pi over 4. Okay. Now, what are the coordinates right there? The coordinates are root 2 over 2, comma, root 2 over 2. So, you know, cosine is your x value and sine is your y value, but in this case, they're both root 2 over 2. 
So cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So root 2 over 2. And then on the bottom we have pi over 4 squared. Uh, we could write that certainly as pi squared over 16. Okay. Now let's see here. Um, what I would do, so we have a compound fraction, complex fraction here. What I would do, I think, is, um, is try to combine the fractions on the top and then divide by the fraction on the bottom. So let's see here. On the top, we have, essentially, we, we're going to end up getting, so let's see here, pi square roots of 2 over uh, 8 minus the square root of 2 over 2. Now, let's, we want to get a common denominator here. So instead of just writing that as the square root of 2 over 2, I could multiply the top and the bottom by 4 here, and that would give me a, an 8 as a common denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 4. That will give me an 8 on the denominator, but that will put a 4 right there. That way I can go ahead and combine. Okay, so the, I'm not going to do anything to the denominator right now. So we could say we still have a pi squared over 16 on the bottom. Now the numerator though, it just now combines to pi square roots of 2 minus 4 square roots of 2 over 8. Okay. Um, I could factor out a square root of 2 on the top there. <laughs> There's a lot of algebra in this one. So I could say, uh, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and, uh, well, well, we, we can just do this. Let's factor out a square root of 2 on the, on the fraction on the top. So we still have over 8. If we factor out a root 2, uh, I would have pi minus 4. But I'm still dividing by pi squared pi squared over 16. So now I have a fraction divided by another fraction. So we all know how to do you know, um, division with fractions. We flip and multiply. We take the reciprocal of the divisor and multiply. So that's going to give us 16 square roots of 2 times pi minus 4 over 8 sorry, 8 uh, pi squared. Now notice here we have 16 over 8. We could rewrite that as 2 square roots of 2 times pi minus 4 over pi squared. Now can we do anything else? Mm, I think not. <laughs> I think that's enough simplification, okay? So let's just recap. That was a lot of simplification. So we started with f prime up here, sine x over x. We found the derivative using the quotient rule, and the derivative was this, x cosine x minus sine x over x squared. We then wanted to find the derivative evaluated at pi over 4. So at pi over 4, we plugged in a pi over 4 for x everywhere in our derivative function. We then uh, simplified, we found out what cosine of pi over 4 and sine of pi over 4 were using our unit circle. Again, this should be memorized. But now look at how much algebra that was. Now I pretty much wrote out every step there. But I would probably suggest that you write out all the steps too, just in case, you know, to try to avoid algebraic errors. But that was a lot of steps there. Let's see, there we are, all the way down there to the bottom. Now, what is this? That is f prime at pi over 4. Again, what that means 
is that is the slope of the tangent line of our original function. The original function was f of x equals sine x over x. And our original point was c equals pi over 4. So at pi over 4, the slope of the tangent line is this. Let's say I want to write the equation of the tangent line of this function at this point. Well, I would just use point slope form. Recall point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now to use that, it's called point slope form. We need a slope, which is right here. Here's my slope. Slope of the tangent line is right there, but I need a point. Well, that's an x value, but for my point slope form, I need an x comma y. So to find the y value I need, I would uh, take pi over 4 and plug it into my original function. Okay, so what is f of pi over 4 to get to the y value? F not f prime, now f of pi over 4, okay, what do we say sine of pi over 4 was earlier? That was root 2 over 2. So root 2 over 2 over pi over 4. So we have a fraction divided by another fraction, so f of pi over 4, uh, so we flip the denominator and multiply, excuse, excuse me, flip the divisor and multiply, so that's 4 square roots of 2 over 2 pi. So there's my corresponding y value. 4 square roots of 2 over 2 pi. Okay, so that's x1 comma y1. So I have a point and I have a slope. I can use point slope form. Now this isn't going to be very pretty but we will certainly get a equation. So we could say y minus y1, which is 4 square roots of 2 over 2 pi equals m. Oh, I'm going to run out of room here. I'm going to have to uh, scroll over just a little bit. Equals m, which here's our m. It is 2 square roots of 2 times pi minus 4 over pi squared times x minus x1, which is pi over 4. So that is the equation of our tangent line, but let's solve it for y. So we could say y equals, okay, let's distribute uh, let's distribute the right hand side and then we're going to add this to both sides. So we're going to have 2 square roots of 2 times pi minus 4 over pi squared times x minus, okay, uh, we're going to have pi over 4 times this. Okay, so bear with me or excuse me, we're, we're going to have negative pi over 4 times this. That's going to give us a pi on the top and pi squared on the bottom. That'll leave us with just one pi on the bottom, pi to the first power. So we're going to have just a pi on the bottom, and then we have a 4, excuse me, we're, uh, not, we're not going to just have a, a, a pi, because we have a 4 on the bottom here, but we have a 2, so we're going to be left with 2 pi on the bottom. Again, I'm just multiplying and trying to reduce the same step. Hopefully I don't make a mistake here. So we have a 2 on the bottom and a pi on the bottom. Otherwise, we're going to have a root 2 times pi minus 4. Let me double check real fast. We'll have a 2, we'll have a pi. Yeah, that should be good. So I just distributed, I just multiplied this and I multiplied this, just using the distributed property. But let's not forget about, we need to add that to both sides. So plus uh, 4 square roots of 2 over 2 pi. Look at that, I have a common denominator. 
So finally, I can say y equals 2 square roots of 2 times pi minus 4 over pi squared x minus, okay, let's see here, minus, um, how do we want to do this? Now let's say, let's say plus there. Let's say plus there, and we're going to have 2 pi on the bottom, and then we're going to have uh, 4 square roots of 2 minus the square root of 2 times pi minus 4. Okay, I think that does it for us, because if we broke the fraction apart, we would have 4 square roots of 2 over 2 pi minus the square root of 2 times pi minus 4 over 2 pi. So that works. So this equation looks really not good, but let's think about it. Okay, this is our slope. So we have y equals m times x plus that is our y-intercept. So we have y equals mx plus b, where that is our y-intercept, and this is our slope. So this is the equation of the tangent line to our original function, which is f of x equals sine x over x at this point right here, c equals pi over 4. Now, finding the equation of the tangent line that I just did, this business right here, that wasn't asked in the original question. But since it's such a common exercise for us, and I knew it was going to be a really ugly answer, I wanted to go ahead and show you how even though it's a very, uh, for lack of a better word, ugly answer, it does work. Okay, in fact, let me pull up a graph real fast and I'll show you that it works. Alright guys, there you see it. Here is my function f of x. That red curve is sine x over x. And this blue line right here is my tangent line. And I suppose I could add in the point, uh, what was it? It was uh, pi over 4 comma... Let's see. Let's see if we can get that point to show up. There. So we have our point pi over 4, comma f of pi over 4. We have our red curve that's sine x over x. And there's that really uh, not pleasant to look at tangent line. At least the function was not tangent not pretty to look at but there you have it so the solution works out wasn't pretty wasn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world but it does work out so we found the equation of the tangent line of sine x over x at the point uh, pi over 4 okay the x value is pi over 4 I guess I could show you with a nice scale there let's see pi over 2 so there we are so that is pi over 4 right there, halfway between 0 and pi over 2. That is the tangent line for sure. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions, just let me know.